is uh, Denis Ushakov, and uh, I live in St. Petersburg, Russia, and uh, basically that's awesome, because in uh, summertime, uh, St. Petersburg looks like this. Uh, but I should warn you, if you want to go uh, to St. Petersburg in any other season, uh, you probably would be disappointed because it looks like this. <laughs> so uh, I'm working at JetBrains for uh, six years, and uh, I do lots of different stuff. Uh, and uh, one of the things I, I do is uh, working on uh, debugging support for RubyMine. So uh, I decided that would be a good opportunity to tell you about the things I know about debugging API and uh, debugging internals. So uh, if you want to do a debugger, uh, you need to be able to answer uh, two basic questions. Uh, the first one is, where are we? Uh, so in order to uh, debugger, to hit your breakpoint or uh, provide you some information, it should know uh, where in the code it's positioned, like the file and the line. And the second question is, what's going on? Uh, we need to know whether uh, we have an exception raised and uh, what uh, variable values we have and uh, stuff like that. So uh, let me start with a super small demo. So here's a really, really small program. And uh, uh, that's how it would look the most simple scenario of debugging. We put a breakpoint on some line, uh, and then we execute our program, and it stops on that line. And we can see uh, variable values, we can see the uh, global variables, we can see the stack frames, uh, and we can switch between the stack frames and uh, also, we can evaluate different, uh, different expressions. So uh, like that was the two big questions. Uh, but there's also one very, very important like, side question. That's the speed. Uh, because uh, we don't want debugger to be super slow. We want it to be uh, as fast as possible, uh, ideally as fast as the program without debugger. So uh, during the talk, I'm going to be doing some measurements, and uh, uh, I'll take a like, small, really simple program uh, and with uh, lots of iterations. And uh, in order to uh, avoid uh, input-output, uh, if effects, uh, I, will, I would do no output in that program. And uh, I'm going to be measuring uh, the, the execution using the default Ruby benchmark framework. So here is our really simple, really small program with lots of iterations. Uh, to set the uh, benchmarking, uh, I'll need to run it without any, any debugging API enabled, and on my machine, it takes about like five seconds. Not bad. So how are we going to understand where we are at the moment? Um, Ruby 1.0 introduces really simple and handy function. It's called setTraceFunc. Uh, it takes a proc, and uh, every time uh, an event happens, uh, an Ruby VM event happens, uh, your, your block gets called, and you get uh, event, file, line, ID, binding, and class name. Uh, file and line are pretty obvious. ID is the method name that's currently uh, executed. Uh, class name is the uh, class uh, of the object uh, on which the, that method is executed. And uh, let's take a look, a deeper look, at the two other arguments. Uh, the first one is event, and uh, there are seven groups of different events. Uh, the most basic and the most uh, often happening event is line event. It gets called on every line, on almost every line uh, of your code, 
And uh, sometimes it gets called twice for a line, but usually like one line, one line event. Uh, the second group is call and return. Uh, uh, these two are, call, uh, are generated when uh, Ruby VM uh, calls a method or uh, returns for, from a Ruby method. Uh, C call and C return. These are basically the same, except they are uh, generated when uh, you are executing a C function. Uh, class and end are generated when uh, Ruby uh, VM starts interpreting the uh, class body and end when the class body ends. Uh, rise event is generated when the exception happens. And uh, Ruby 2.0 uh, generates uh, two additional classes, like uh, bcall and breturn, which are generated when uh, the execution enters the block or leaves the block. And uh, thread begin, thread end, when uh, you start or end the thread. Uh, I should notice that the set trace func doesn't know about these two new classes. So uh, the other interesting parameter is binding. Uh, basically, that's the same you would get with the kernel binding, binding. and uh, it captures the execution context, such as variables, methods, and their values, so you can reuse that to perform evaluations later on. So uh, let's add some uh, output to see how our uh, program looks from a debugging point of view. So uh, we see that, uh, first of all, we call method our action on an object. Then, we, uh, then line event gets generated for that method. Uh, then we have a C call as we are entering times method. Uh, you may notice that that's a C call because that's a core method and it's implemented in C. Then we get line event for a uh, times block. Then we get call event for a uh, go to Rails conf method, line event for that method, and uh, basically we are returning from, from all of those. So does anybody have an idea how long would it take? Yeah, definitely. It takes about two minutes. Like, two minutes from a five seconds. What's, what's, what's going on? Uh, basically, the problem is with the binding. Uh, evaluating binding is really, really expensive. So to evaluate the binding, we need to walk the stack to gather all the available variables. We need to store the, their values, and uh, it takes lots of time. So. What should we do? Like, we can just keep calm and wait for the results. Uh, to be honest, I uh, launched, uh, I was able to, to uh, boot the simple Rails application uh, with the set trans trace func enabled once. <laughs> Haven't tried that any, anymore. So what should we do? Uh, and Ruby 1.8.3 introduces a uh, new method. It's called rb add event hook. You may notice that the code below is, doesn't look like Ruby because that's C, yeah. And uh, uh, like you can specify uh, the function that's basically a callback that would be called. And uh, one big difference is that you can also specify events. So for example, if you don't need a line event, you can just uh, specify that you want all other events, and that would make execution faster. So let's try executing uh, the same program with the empty uh, callback, but using all, all events. And it takes 10 and a half seconds, not bad. Not bad. So generally, when we have an C API, there should be a wrapper gam that you can use. Unfortunately, that's not the case. There is a gem, but it's only compatible with uh, uh, Ruby 1.8. So I, uh, at some point, I thought, OK, I'll just uh, do some stuff and fix the uh, compatibility and get it ready for uh, 1.9 and 2 and, uh, well, 
But actually, I'm a quite a lazy person. I really love being lazy. And uh, thanks to Koichi, I can be lazy because he uh, did all that for Ruby 2.0. And uh, he brought us new APIs that's called TracePoint and Debug Inspector. So what's the TracePoint? Basically, that's the wrapper around the add uh, event hook with the good object-oriented Ruby API. So what you need to do is just uh, specify events you want to listen for, and uh, you'll get your uh, block called every time that event happens. And uh, you can get fro from the trace point object, you can get all the information uh, you can get from this uh, trace func. Let's try our program with uh, trace point. So it takes about 30 seconds, which is not uh, as good as uh, event hook, but still, still pretty, pretty good. Uh, and that's true unless we want to access binding. Because it makes uh, the program run as slow as we have with, with the set trace fun. So uh, the biggest difference between uh, the trace point API and trace func is that the binding uh, is evaluated lazily, so we don't spend lots of time for that. And the second API I was talking about uh, is uh, debug inspector, and it's also about being lazy. So uh, when you have set trace func or add event hook, you'll need to uh, continuously maintain all your frames, a uh, list of the frames, and uh, continuously uh, capture the state of the uh, virtual machine uh, to uh, understand what's going on and uh, to present, the, uh, to, to present uh, all the frames at the time we hit the breakpoint. With the bug inspector, it isn't so. Uh, when we reach the breakpoint, we can just call uh, the debug inspector open and uh, our callback will receive an object with the uh, backtrace and all the uh, VM internal information about that. But you may have noticed that it's also a C API. And uh, as we know from the previous slides, if there is C API, then we have probably a wrapper gem for uh, that, and uh, it's obsolete. Well, no. Uh, there is a pretty uh, handy debug inspector gem uh, and uh, if you want to access all the, those APIs from, uh, from Ruby, it's quite easy to do so. So you just uh, call uh, debug inspector open and you get your object and you get your uh, locations and uh, you can get the bindings of, from the frames or class and stuff like that. The only limitation of uh, this API is that you cannot use uh, the object that you get from the, uh, from, from the uh, block. Uh, you cannot use it outside that block. So if you, for example, need uh, to access the bindings uh, outside of that block, you need to uh, capture and store them elsewhere. So uh, here comes a small performance summary. We get a five seconds with a simple program run. Uh, set trace func is really, really slow. It's two minutes. And uh, add event hook is super fast. Uh, and trace point is uh, in between. Uh, I should add that it's, uh, it's possible to get the almost the same performance uh, with the trace point uh, as we get with the event hook uh, when we are using the C block. Uh, because unfortunately, when we run a debugger, we uh, have to watch for all events. And uh, as you have seen, uh, this, this small program generates nine events per like two calls, and that's a lot. Uh, for, for else, that's uh, even bigger. So uh, who's using what? 
So set trace fun is actually used by uh, debugger B uh, that comes with your Ruby interpreter. And uh, that's why it's so slow. Event hook is used by Ruby debug base and uh, debugger gems. Ruby debug base is basically the uh, fr debugger front end for Ruby debug and uh, Ruby debug ID. And uh, it's also used for uh, aircalf, which was used to capture the coverage uh, for 1.8 until we got some sweet coverage API that's used by SimpleCalf. And uh, trace point is, uh, and debug inspector are used by dbase, bybug, and uh, binding off color gem. Uh, so they are like 2.0 only. And dbase uh, gem is uh, front end for uh, Ruby debug ID. But it seems that under the hood, everyone, like everyone is using uh, add event hook. Because set trace fun uh, generates a new hook which is executed on every event and it uh, kept, uh, generates uh, the binding uh, eagerly. Uh, and set trace fun is uh, doing the same, but it generates the object uh, which, is, uh, which evaluates binding lazily. So uh, let's continue speaking about being lazy. Uh, I love being lazy, but you know what? Your CPU also loves being lazy. Uh, if you don't push him too, too hard, he can do things faster. Uh, so with the trace point API, we still have to uh, check on every event that we are uh, on a breakpoint line or not. So uh, that's a, that adds a pretty big performance impact. So I, w I was measuring uh, these, all the stuff with empty hooks. And you can imagine uh, if you're going to check on every event, it's going to be even longer. So uh, here comes uh, Rubinius, because in Rubinius, it's, uh, you don't need to uh, check explicitly for a line and a file. Uh, what you do is basically you kept, uh, when this, your script is compiled, you get the, an, an execution block, and you uh, get the uh, instruction for, uh, for, for, the, for that particular line. So here's here how looks the, the base section uh, for Rubinius. This cool, uh, hook is called when the script is compiled, and we check in that the script matches our file path. And if that's so, we locate in the line uh, uh, for for uh, locating the execution block for our uh, uh, line and uh, instruction pointer. In uh, if we find that. We're just setting a breakpoint. And uh, that makes uh, Rubinius uh, debugging super, super fast. Like, uh, here's the comparison between simple run and uh, full debugger enabled, because we don't have to check uh, basically anything. And uh, our breakpoints are called uh, at the moment we are reaching them. So it will be. Cool if we could have such API in Ruby. So basically, uh, I think that's all I know about the Ruby debugger. So you may find me on uh, Twitter, on uh, GitHub, and you can take uh, a look at the examples and the benchmarks I was uh, using uh, during this talk. And uh, maybe experiment a little bit and see what's, what's going on inside of your Ruby.